Hello, I'm Jane Armitage, a Professor of Clinical Trials and Epidemiology from the University of Oxford, and I've been presenting data from the HPS2 Thrive trial, a large randomized trial of extended release niacin plus loropiprant in high risk cardiovascular patients. We know that patients already on uh, effective statin based LDL lowering therapy who are at high risk still get recurrent events despite their background LDL lowering therapy. So we are trying to find treatments that will reduce that risk further. Niacin is one such poss possible treatment. Niacin has good effects on the lipid profile. It raises HDL cholesterol, it lowers LDL cholesterol and LP little a. And so we wanted to assess the value of niacin on top of effective statin-based therapy in these high-risk patients. We randomized 25,673 patients from six countries, the UK, four Scandinavian countries, and China, and followed them for about four years. Before patients were randomized, we did two things. One, we standardized their background LDL lowering therapy to either simvastatin 40 milligrams daily or simvastatin plus ezetimibe. Patients then were given ER niacin one gram daily for four weeks, followed by two grams daily for four weeks. And only those patients who tolerated the two gram dose for about a month were then randomized. Patients were followed up for a median of 3.9 years. And the results of the study showed that we saw no significant benefit on the primary outcome of major vascular events. So that was a composite outcome of coronary events, non-fatal MI or coronary death, any stroke, so including both hemorrhagic and ischemic stroke, or any arterial revascularization. So there was no overall benefit. We saw it was a 4% non-significant reduction among those people who got the ER niacin loropiprant. We actually saw some increased hazards from taking the ER niacin loropiprant. So unexpectedly, we saw an increase in a variety of different serious adverse events, both fatal and non-fatal, among the people who took the ER niacin loropiprant combination. In total, this meant that of a thousand patients treated, about 30 of them would have had a serious adverse event due to the ER niacin loropiprant. Now those were mostly serious adverse events had already known to be caused by niacin. So they included di complications with di diabetes control, so difficulties for people with diabetes, but also an increased risk of new onset diabetes among people who didn't have diabetes at entry. We saw gastrointestinal problems, we saw problems with infections, we saw problems with bleeding, um, problems with musculoskeletal problems, as well as some skin problems. So uh, these, most of these side effects are already recognized as being due to the niacin. Um, the one real exception for that is the infections. But with, no, with a drug which causes no overall benefit, it's clear that uh, these hazards are unacceptable. And the role of niacin for, the cardiovascular, for cardiovascular disease prevention, I think, needs to be reconsidered in the light of these findings. 